Hello everybody! Today we are going to see our brave Kerbonauts visiting Edna, a small dwarf planet orbiting between Duna and Dres. Edna has also a moon called Dak, which is really tiny, just half of the Mazukili. During this trip, we are going to visit both bodies. This time, preparations don't start with launching the interplanetary ship, as we already have one. Interplanetary transport system. It's the same vessel that was used for getting crew to and from Duna. Hopefully, a flight tested vessel will guarantee that there will be no problems during the journey. As you can see, the refueling vessel has already rendezvoused with the mothership. It has brought fuel and supplies that will keep Kerbals alive and happy during the trip. Having the ship prepared, we can already launch the crew. This transfer vessel will get the crew to the ITS, then it will wait in orbit for the ITS to come back, and then it will bring the crew safely back to Kerbin. Before departing, engineer has a last task to do getting sample storage containers brought here by the refuel vessel and attach them to the interplanetary transport system, eliminating a tiny design flaw. Katvi Kerman has no problem in completing this task and the vessel is almost ready to depart. Almost, as of course we cannot forget about the tiny lander that will allow Kerbals to get to the surface of Etna and Dak. The crew transfer vessel has to be undocked to make docking port available for the lander, so after a short while of space dance our payload is finally in place, finishing the preparation of the journey as the transfer window is already opened. Unfortunately, during the final checks I've realized something terrible. Engines do not work. It happened because in the meantime I was messing with mods and installing and uninstalling Kerbal Atomics turned the Beacon Atomic engines to scrap. Remember kids, never mess with your mod list in the middle of career. So Kerbals have taken the ride back home and the mission has to be redesigned. I really liked my interplanetary transport system, so I have decided not to scrap it, but to make something more careful, to add more boosters. I have designed two massive boosters that will dock to the two docking ports on the sides of the ITS. After the changes, the vessel will be even more capable than before. By the way, you might have noticed that the parts look a bit different now. It's because I have removed the mod adding shiny surfaces, as it was a bit glitchy. So here it is, of the upgraded interplanetary transport system. Finally, the crew can launch again. This time for good. Engineer Haldry Kerman will have an important task to do before departure. He will carefully detach old engines, which are currently just dead weight. It's a difficult task, but luckily he's a trained professional. As you could see, everything went precisely as planned, so the mission continues. 
Edna transfer burn of almost 3 km per second was executed nominally, and the crew is on its way to this mysterious dwarf planet. After about a year of uneventful journey, Theokan, Lindbas and Henry Kerman are entering Edna's orbit. Some final tweaks to the trajectory have been made and two explorers are getting ready in their tiny lander to be the first of their species to put their footprints on this foreign body. Linbus Kerman has decided to put the craft down on the edge of a huge crater, probably because of the view. And here they are, first steps on Edna's surface. Everything looked quite normal so far, but Linbus have noticed a strange floating rock quite similar to the ones that were to find on Gilly by the wine of the previous expeditions. It was a perfect spot to place the flag. After admiring the view for a while, Linbas and Teokan came to the conclusion that it's not that interesting and they have decided to go back to the mothership. The lounge was quite straightforward as the pilot decided to make all the phasing and inclination change maneuvers on orbit, as the delta V requirement is acceptable. Next stop, DAC. Transfer burns around this system were really tiny, as just 120 meters per second is enough to reach this natural satellite. This time, it's Linbus and Hadri who are designated to get to the surface. Orbital speed of uh, 33 meters per second shows that the gravity exerted by DAC is laughably tiny. Original landing spot turned out to be really sloped, but Limbas have noticed a nice ledge nearby, so they headed there. Surface of Duck was quite rough, so the view was really interesting. Hadri decided to use the jetpack to see the surroundings better, but after a short while he came back. Because of weak gravity, it was not a problem to eyeball the propelled trajectory to get back to the ITS. And some moments later, Kerbals were already docked, watching TV and drinking beer, uh, lemonade. It was just when Teokan asked why the flag was still in the lander. 
there is a strict don't drink and fly rule, so Tio can grab the flag himself and went EVA. After he came back, all the scientific samples were transferred from Lander to the mothership and some moments later Lander was put into a suborbital trajectory to crash against Duck. Tiny puffs from main engines were enough to get the craft out of Duck's SOI and the return maneuver has been plotted. Kerbals realize that they are in perfect window to come back home and they have decided to make use out of it. The whole stay in Edna's system was 14 days. Journey back will take another year. Right after reaching Kerbin's SOI, quite a big burn has been made. This burn put the mothership on the trajectory to meet back with the crew transfer vessel. After plotting the final maneuver that was supposed to cancel relative speed, I've realized that the Delta V requirement for that burn was exactly what was left in the Delta V budget. So to be on the safe side, I've dumped some of the excess food to reduce mass. After all, there was 11 meters per second worth of fuel left in tanks. Final rendezvous and docking had to be done with crew transfer vessel, but the problem was, it didn't have the probe core, so Lindbus had to go out to bring the ship in. Finally, carbonauts and all the samples were placed in the return pod and they have all safely came back home. Thank you everyone for watching, please press like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and see you again in my next video.